We recently began testing transistors for a new laser driver board. During the prototyping stage, something came up that I thought would be valuable to share with users. I wanted to test a new MOSFET by incorporating it into an existing driver board and the footprint did not line up with the chip's pins. So I needed to use some kind of conductive material to connect the pins to the footprint. I had originally tried to verify functionality by using regular stranded wire. Here's what that looked like. And here's what the output looked like. We were getting extremely long rise times and lots of ringing and distortion, despite the fact that the MOSFET was faster than the original. This was not going to meet the specs that we needed. It was clear that something in this setup was slowing the signal down. Instead of wires, we tried using copper tape. Here's what that looked like. And here's what the pulse looked like after. This completely fixed the problem. The issue was actually the self-inductance of the wires. Here I used some online calculators to compare the self-inductance of stranded wire and flat copper tape, and the results were very surprising. If I were to use the same length of stranded wire instead of copper tape, I would need to use this 4AWG cable to achieve the same results as the 0.7 millimeter thick copper. Obviously, this was not practical or even possible. This is a great illustration of why wire is a bad choice for attaching a laser diode to a driver and why we recommend using our micro strip line for smaller boards, the full size strip line for larger PCX units with higher current and higher pulse width, as well as our twisted pair bundle an external PCB. The wide flat cable will facilitate a clean fast pulse even at longer distances and the PCB has footprints for standard laser diode packages and that facilitates cooling and will also limit package inductance.